this time of year in uh, end of August is when the tomato crops are harvested. So this is the time I make my tomato sauce and it's pretty easy. I'm going to run through the steps for you. So as you can see, there was a bushel of a uh, half bushel, I should say, of 25 pounds of Roma tomatoes is the type I use. Best for sauce because uh, the water content is not as high as the field tomatoes. Some people use field tomatoes, which is fine, but it does give off a little bit more water content uh, after they're cooked. So here you can see in a laundry tub in the basement, I've uh, dumped the 25 pound box or half bushel of Romas and I'm giving them a good rinse. Um, previous to that, they were uh, soaking in some water. And that's just to get all the, any dirt off or any pieces of leaves or little bits. So give it a good rinse. Make sure uh, you go through them and pick out any ones that are really rotten, but uh, they all look pretty good. So I like to do this in the basement because it kind of keeps the kitchen clear. Um, I do have enough room um, on top of my washing machine to set up the roaster. You can do the baking or the cooking of the tomatoes in the oven as well. So I'll talk about that in a sec. So here you can see I have a cutting board and my tomatoes uh, being sliced into quarters, typically for the large ones. And if they're really small, I just have them. So this is kind of the tedious process of, you know, having to go through and cut them all and you're filling up that, uh, it's an 18 quart electric roaster and that's just the pan that uh, you'll see later on. I put the pan inside the electric roaster. Now you can use a traditional roaster in the oven. You can also do this on stovetop and boil them, um, but do not add any water. There's tons of water in the tomatoes already and you don't want your heat to be too high. You don't want to burn the tomatoes. So uh, I'll show you the temperature in a minute. So I'm just showing you there how to not cut off your fingers and uh, just with the reason you're cutting them is to speed up the cooking process and to get the water out of them basically. Um, what you're looking for in the end is the meat of the tomato. So there you can see one that I found that's not the best so I just cut it in half and it's still usable and that part gets discarded composted. So you just go through and quarter them all. Uh, like I said, the small ones you can half. So this takes about roughly half an hour of slicing. But that's probably pretty much the, the most work you're going to have in this process. So the roaster pan is filling up. And when you get your tomatoes, it's important to let them sit for a day or, um, you know, mostly a, a day is enough to let them sit because they do keep uh, ripening uh, once you bring them home. So uh, you can even let them sit outside for a bit or in your basement, but uh, let them sit and you'll see that they do ripen up uh, over time. So you can see I'm pressing down. Uh, 25 pounds does fit in my roaster because the, uh, the lid is a bit convex. So here you can see I'm adding a bit of kosher salt on top. Um, we'll add a little bit more salt later on. I'll show you that. So here you can see the roaster and you add the insert pan inside. And then what I do is I give the edges a wipe and make sure everything's kind of in place before I put the lid on. Now the temperature you should set it at is between 200 and 250 degrees. Um, depending on your oven or your roaster. If you find it's a little bit too high and the, the tomatoes are starting to burn, um, then you would turn it down, obviously. But 250 seems to work okay. And this is about after an hour and a bit. Uh, you know, they're, they're starting to obviously cook and you just wanna kind of move them around, make sure none are, are getting burnt on the edges uh, where, the, where the element uh, is hot for this type of roaster. Again, this is an 18 quart electric roaster. Um, it can fit a full-size turkey, so uh, sometimes they go on sale. I find them really easy to use for this purpose, but yes, you can do it in a regular oven as well. But after an hour to hour and a half, you just kind of want to move them around, make sure that they're cooking evenly and they're not burning. You can see a few stuck to the sides, but they're not charred or anything. Okay, press them down. You'll see uh, quite a bit of water starting to develop and come out of the uh, tomatoes. And by adding salt, you're also helping to extract some of that water. So 
So after about four to six hours, depending on the size of your tomatoes, um, how ripe they are and everything, but I think this is about four hours, um, you'll see that there's a ton of water here. So for this, I'm going to show you two batches in this video. This first batch I wanted to make nice and thick for doing, uh, <clears throat> adding to pizza and the cabbage rolls and I wanted uh, the water content to be pretty low. So you'll see I take quite a bit of water out of this batch. And the way I do that is I use a, a, a scoop with a, a slotted spoon or a scoop, uh, like a ladle with holes in it and I press it down with another ladle and uh, you can see how much water can come out. Now I have three uh, one point, I think eight liter um, food safe uh, juice containers that uh, I'm using to put the uh, tomato juice in. So I use this juice for making tomato soup or to adding, um, making fresh bread. I can add that to that as well. So I reserve this. I either put it in the, fro in the freezer or in the fridge. Okay, so I get a full uh, three jugs of water. Now normally in the second batch, batch you'll see I only do one jug um, and that, that is typical for a, a nice um, normal consistency sauce. So this one's going to be very thick sauce. So that's why I took all that water out. But if you just want normal sauce you would only take about uh, you know one and a half to two liters or one or about two quarts of water out of your tomatoes. But it's important to take some of the water out because you don't want a really runny sauce. You're going to have it separate in your jars. So here you see a food mill. Uh, it's a quite an old one but it still works well. It has the three different screen sizes. Um, this one's uh, in the middle so it takes out uh, the seeds and the peels and just gives you the kind of the meat of the tomato which is what I'm using for the first batch. The second batch I use the less um, fine screen so some of the seeds got through, which I don't mind, uh, in, a, in a thinner sauce. So typically for your pastas, um, a thinner sauce is nicer. So here you can see it's quite, uh, quite thick. It takes a bit more work. When you have a little bit more water content, the turning is a bit easier. And you end up with a thinner sauce, but uh, it goes by a lot quicker than this. So this is a good half hour, 45 minutes of a uh, bit of hand cranking and adjusting, and but you'll see in the end uh, you get quite a nice uh, thick sauce. And I've sped it up a bit for you so you aren't bored to death. And you might have to adjust it or reverse uh, turn once in a while to, to clear any clogs or to make sure it's going through. But it does a good job of uh, not letting the seeds go through and the peels. So this is the finer, the medium mesh screen. And that's what you end up with. And then I uh, kept going and I ended up with a full one full pot. You'll see later in the video, if you do it uh, as a little bit thinner and take out less water, you end up with two full pots on the stove. So what you saw there was two tablespoons of just table sugar and one tablespoon of sea salt. Obviously this is to your own taste. For a thicker sauce, I didn't want it to be too bitter, so that's why I added the uh, sugar. For my later batch, I did not add any sugar at all. Okay, so salt to taste. Um, I don't add any other th anything else uh, during this process, just salt and sugar for a thick sauce. And on the right, you can see that I have my jars being uh, sanitized and uh, close to boiling water. Some people do it in the oven but I find I already have water heating up anyway for uh, sanitizing my lids and rings. So I use that same water to sanitize my jars. Here's some of the equipment, a funnel. This is very important, that's a jar lifter and you have citric acid. So you can buy a big bag, uh, not very expensive because it lasts a long time. Quarter teaspoon of that per jar and a half a teaspoon of your salt of choice, uh, either kosher sea salt or table salt. There you can see the jars and the lids and the rings in some um, close to boiling water. And they'll be pulled out in a minute. So I have everything set up on the side here. I'm gonna add my half teaspoon of sea salt per jar. These are one quart or one liter jars. This first batch is, has the wide mouth um, 
I do use a mixture of wide mouth and standard size mouth uh, mason jars. And the citric acid uh, basically prevents any nasties from growing inside your jars during storage because there's not really enough acid in the standard tomatoes uh, to prevent sometimes bacteria from growing. So this is a, a safe bet. It doesn't really add any difference to your flavor of your uh, sauce. Here I'm adding one fresh leaf of basil from my garden. That's traditional, but for the next batch I did not add it. So again, this is for uh, the peaches I make. Um, I like that added flavor of the, the fresh leaf of, uh, of basil. So I just move it a little bit closer to the pot here, try not to make a mess. You get the odd drip and drop. And here you can see I put the funnel back on because I wasn't satisfied with uh, how close to the top. So generally you want to be a quarter inch to um, a half inch from the, the lip of the jar. So there you can see the ring and the snap lid. So I'm putting it on by hand. There are also magnet uh, snap lid um, lifters you can buy. Or that came with this kit, I just can't find it. But uh, I just grab the edges and put it on. Now inside that snap lid, the flat piece, is a rubber kind of gasket that seals. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so we're putting in a water bath. So in my situation, I have a 10 quart pressure cooker pot that I'm just going to have uh, boiling. And uh, you want to make sure the, the entire jar is, is covered with that water. And I'll talk about the times in a minute for boiling. So you continue on with, uh, you put another set of jars in your, in your water to sanitize. And you take the rings and the lids out and you add your ingredients as we discussed earlier. And you keep filling until your all your sauce is gone. And have a pair of tongs, as you can see there, to lift your lids and your uh, rings out. Okay, so for 35 minutes you want to simmer or light boil, as long as you have a bit of uh, action there in the water. Uh, this is to ensure that uh, the contents are fully cooked and that uh, any bacteria that's existing at this point is killed off. So you want to carefully lift with your uh, jar lifter. It's very important to have one of these. Uh, be difficult to uh, and maybe not safe to do it another way, but uh, these aren't very expensive to buy. I would recommend buying one. Okay, so make sure you have a good grip. And this is a uh, con induction, sorry, an induction oven. So there's no heat on the uh, stove top. That's why you see uh, I have a towel across the top of it. But obviously, uh, another type of stove, you would have to have this on the countertop. So I'm going to add my last two jars. Again, this is the thick batch, so I only have six jars. In a few minutes, you'll see the bigger batch will produce ten jars, one quart, one liter. So for two, obviously I didn't have enough water for because uh, it doesn't displace uh, as much water. So you're going to have to add some tap water, hot tap water, and then let it come back up to a, a light boil and do it for 35 minutes again. So it's important you stick to that 35 minutes. Uh, that's what the standard is uh, for sanitizing your jars, uh, making sure everything's cooked inside. So here you can see I'm topping up to make sure that uh, everything is submersed and I'm going to wait for it to come up to that light boil in 35 minutes. And I'm just wiping off the top. Here you can see I've added some text to uh, say how important it is to once these cool down you take the rings off and you just lift the jar up by holding the edges of the snap lid, the flat part. And if it comes off right away you know you don't have a good seal. You'll also hear popping noises, so once it does seal properly, the vacuum pressure inside the jar will cause the lid to uh, kind of cave in and you'll see that uh, it has a good seal. So make sure you check before you store these jars away, you kind of want to lift them up by that edge and make sure that uh, the seal is good or else you could end up with some 
rotten tomato sauce and you don't want that okay so here you can see this is the second batch and up with 10 jars so you have a little more seeds because it was a coarser screen for the food mill but you get end up with more sauce again I added kosher salt to taste I did not add basil for the second one and this is the consistency you're gonna end up with so I hope you enjoyed the video and try it out this time of year is make, great to make uh, fresh sauce. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye for now.